Okay, good morning everyone. So glad you're tuning in this morning. Uh, it's going to be a good day today. I know it is. And I'll tell you what, we've been praying so much for our city, uh, praying so much for our nation at this time. God bless you, Louis Alvarez, for coming on board with us right now. And uh, Tiffany Davis, praise God. Uh, good morning, good morning, Louis. Hallelujah. Michael Cook, man. Ready for some temple maintenance, brother? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Praise God. Jeanette Barlow. Pastora Navidad. Bendiciones, mi hermana. Amen, amen. Arlene Gold. Oh, Moscow, all the way from Florida. Come on now. I love that. Rose, you beat Shelby this time by just a wire. Come on, man. That's good. Nene, you are such a blessing, sister. God bless you. Congratulations for... Completing Grow and Vicky Sulema, also from Florida. Vicky is on there. Diane Smith, good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, amen. We need to wake up every morning and declare that. Hallelujah. Geraldine, good to have you. Tammy Massey, always a blessing. My sister, Cindy Garcia, Michelle Williams, man, we're all coming on board this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Pastora. Good morning. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> it has been a challenging last, last couple of days. Amen. A miracle. Bless you. Renee Rice. Amen. Good to have you. Uh, I don't know about you, but all the stuff that's going on right now, um, it, it's just creating so much tension and so much pressure. And good morning, praise God. And uh, but you know, but really today, I believe that God has a word for every single one of us. So um, I, I'm I'm glad you're you're tuning in today, Craig Simmons. Good to have you, my brother. God bless you, because because today we're going to cover a topic that I think that is so important, and and it's it's about it's about our mindset. It's like it's about our mindset. You know, it's 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 so in key. It's so important to understand that the. The key to your success in anything in life is your mindset. Put that down right now. The key to my success is my mindset. How my where, where is your mind? Uh, do you allow it to drift off and go wherever it wants to, or do you do you do you understand that you can actually regulate where your mind goes? Uh, Rome in the book of Romans. It, it, this is such a powerful scripture. You probably heard it many times before but it's, but it's Romans 12 2 put that down Romans 12 verse 2 and it says this do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God amen do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, it's so important what we allow into our minds. See, we, we can control, we can regulate, uh, we can actually filter through the things that we allow to come into our mind. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you allow things that, that, that come into your mind, it's going to affect how you think. And how you think, your mindset is such an important part of what God is trying to change in every single one of us. Because if he changes your mind, it changes your life. Oh man, put that down right now. If, it, if you change your mind, you change your life. When you change your mind, it points you in so such a different direction. If it, and if you're changing your mind in, 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 in the direction of God, by allowing God to come in every day and influence what's happening, how you're thinking, is so important. That's why we have to be careful. You know, I spoke to somebody yesterday, and they said they keep their television tuned into CNN all day long. They, they just want to stay informed. Well, listen, let me just tell you this. Be careful because you want to be informed, but you don't want, don't want to be conformed. Man, put that down right now. Be informed, not conformed. Because if you allow that to the, the 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 bad news and all the negativity, if that's all you're gonna think about, if that's all your mind is set on, and you're listening and all and all day long that negativity is floating into your heart and into your mind, 
then you're going to be conformed to the world. You're going to, your mindset is going to shift from a mindset of faith, amen, to a mindset of fear. See, the world's going to conform you to what the world wants us to feel and wants us to think. And if the world wants to create confusion and, uh, and, 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 and depression and all these things, listen, I get it, yes. It is serious what's going on. It's it's the perfect storm right now in our world with the coronavirus. And now we have these riots and all this madness that's happening. You know, when you look at all that, it looks like, come on, Matthew 24. You know, I ministered on that last month or so. And we, just, we took each verse of Matthew 24 and broke it down and realized that Matthew 24 are the headlines today. Everything Jesus spoke about, when you get a chance, put this down, Matthew 24. Because Matthew 24, you, I want, I'm not going to go over it today, but you read it for yourself. You'll see that what's happening right now, uh, nation against nation, ethnicity against ethnicity. Uh, it's talking about pestilence. You know, this coronavirus is a pestilence. All these things are happening right now. So the, so the world, is, is, the plan of God is being unfolded. And what Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24 is happening right now. So let me ask you a question. What is your mindset on today? See, that's why it's so important, like, like getting up in the morning, uh, doing your devotions first thing in the morning, uh, cr creating a mindset immediately, a mindset that, that points towards God, a mindset that, that thinks about the Lord first and, and His blessings and His goodness and His grace and mercy, and then walk in His peace because your mind has to be set at peace, amen? See, Colossians 3.22, I'm sorry, 3.2, write that down. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Such an important part of becoming a, a victor, walking in victory, not walking as a victim like so many people are constantly declaring, but walking in victory. Put that down right now, walk in victory. In Colossians 3.2, it says this, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So you see, when you keep your eyes towards heaven, when you keep your eyes pointed towards the Lord, then you know what? That's what God wants you to do. Then you won't be subject to everything that's happening on this planet. And as, and as difficult as, as it is, then the main thing is this. When you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll always have hope. <laughs> Put that down really quick. Jesus gives me hope. So I have a choice, and you have a choice today. Where are you going to allow your mind to go? Where are you going to allow your eyes and your ears and all your senses? What are they going to focus on today? Are you going to focus on the things of this earth? Or are you going to turn your eyes towards Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end? Amen. It all started with him. It will all end with him. And in the meantime, we're going to keep our eyes focused on him. Amen. Praise God. I just want to encourage you with that word first thing this morning. And now we're going to go into our prayer emphasis. And the first one is this. The first one, and this is so important because many of you are doing this right now by tuning in every morning. Create good habits. Put that down. Create good habits. See, we need to take time to stop and evaluate our lives because habits are so important. So you can have a lot of bad habits. You can start dipping into things you know you shouldn't be getting into. You know, uh, people have habits that are addicted, addiction and, and habits of alcoholism and, and habits. You can, you can get to so many different habits that are so destructive. But to combat the temptation to create those type of habits, you have to create good habits. If you want to stay away from the things of this world, the temptations of this world, then create habits, amen, that keep you focused on the Lord. And James 1, 17, put that down. James 1, 17, it says this. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. See, that is, it's a gift. A habit, is, listen, what, what exactly is a habit, Pastor? If that's what you're asking. A habit is any action, conduct, or behavior that you do over and over again. 
See, that means anything you do twice becomes easier. Come on, put, put that down. When I do it twice, it becomes easier. When I do it three times and four times, it becomes easier. It's hard to start a good habit, but if you focus your mind, if you can just discipline your heart to force yourself to do it, eventually the resistance to do it becomes less as you continue to do it over and over again, and then God is able to use this habit. See, God uses habit. It's God's way of helping you to succeed. So you get to decide what habits you have. It's God's way of giving you a, a, a pattern, of put you on a path, amen, for success so that you will become an overcomer as well. See, Daniel, we talked about Daniel yesterday, but Daniel prayed three times a day and that habit that he had of praying so often every single day empowered him to survive a lion's den. <laughs> and not to survive, he, it caused him to thrive because when the king saw that he survived, man, it just lifted him up. The king, the, the king uh, lifted Daniel up in a higher position. And you see, when you have good habits, people will notice People in authority will notice, kings will notice, and want to lift you up as well on this earth. See, some experts say that when you repeat an action for 21 days consecutively, it will become a habit for you. So anything you want to put into your life that's a positive thing, just put your mindset on, put your blinders on, focus in for 21 days of doing that thing, and it will become a habit. You decide, amen, what kind of habit it's going to be. You see, habits are a gift from God. Put that down. Habits are a gift from God. Amen, amen. The second thing, the second thing we're going to focus on is this. Remember that you are royalty. Oh, come on. I got daughters of the king. I've got princes and princesses. I got sons of the king that I'm talking to right now. And we sometimes we don't realize that we are a royal priesthood, amen? And you see, Revelations 3.21, put that down. Re remember, first of all, put down, remember you are royalty. You have to remind yourself that you're not just an ordinary person. Listen, Re Revelations 3.21, put that down. Revelations 3.21 says this, <clears throat> To him that overcome, that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even also as I overcame, and I'm set down with my Father in His throne. Oh, praise God! Do you realize that you are going to be sitting with Jesus? But as He says here, I I will grant you to sit with me in my throne. Do you realize that you are royalty? See, we need to understand that we're not just people walking this planet. We are citizens of heaven. And because we are, we are royalty called to greatness, called to great and mighty things. See, overcomers are extraordinary. See, you think differently. You, you talk differently. You act differently. Because when you have an overcoming mindset, amen, you don't see problems, you see solutions. Man, put that down right now. I don't see problems, I see solutions. You don't see obstacles, you see opportunities. Man, put that down. Now, I know you're saying, Pastor, slow down. Listen, I don't see obstacles, I see opportunities. Every opportunity we have to overcome an obstacle, come on. Every time something happens and you were able to get past it and overcome, it will elevate you to the next level in your life. You see, obstacles are opportunities for promotion. I'll put that down. Obstacles are opportunities for promotions. When you overcome, God lifts you up. See, where you're going, you've never been before. See, you, you're going to places in your life as you continue to walk with God that you've never been before. You're treading on waters that you've never swam in. See, God is taking you to places. And as he leads you there, as you understand that he will lead those that he loves. Man, put that right there. God leads those that he loves. And I want you to know that he loves you with an everlasting love. 
See, an eternal banquet is prepared for you, and it's prepared for me as well. So you see, don't hold on so tight to the things that are that are here, that are things that are on this earth. There is an eternal banquet, and the table will be set out, and we will have an amazing supper with Jesus, a celebration, a feast, amen, that awaits for us eternally. Because listen, you got to walk. Well, I put this down. I'm going to walk in my kingly anointing. That's right. Is uh, The kingly anointing is an anointing of authority. And God has given every single one of us the authority, the Bible says, to tread on serpents, to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. He has given us the authority to walk on this planet, and everything falls in dominion to us. Amen. So understand that walk with that, that particular mindset. Because the kingly anointing, write this down, is keeping spiritual poise in an environment of hostility and disrespect. See, right now we need that more than ever, that kingly anointing in this environment of hostility and disrespect that we see right now. The king walks with his head up and shoulders back because he knows that he is not part of the world but he rises above it. Amen. And that kingly anointing keeps everything in perspective. And it keeps your authority in power as well. Oh man, that is so good. Praise God. And the last thing we're going to pray for is this. And this is this is just an instruction. It ties together with everything we talked about right now. Write this down. Master your mind. Master your mind. Listen, if you don't master your mind, your mind will master you. So you need to understand that your mind, I mentioned it when we first started, be not conformed to the things of this world, but be renewed. Uh, I, I love that by the renewing of your mind. Uh, the, the, your mind is so such an important place for you to understand, and that's where everything takes place. Isaiah 26.3, put that down. Isaiah 26.3. Three says this, you will keep him in peace. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I got, I got, that's such a good scripture. I got, let me read it one more time. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. See, when you keep your mind set on Christ, when you keep your mind set on the Lord, trust will rise up because you'll see his faithfulness. You'll see his goodness and you'll see his mercy. And when you see those things, it's easy for us to put our trust in him. And you see, the word of God plays such an important role in, being, in, in manifesting that, that trust and that vision as well. See, the word of God will solve every problem in your life. Oh, praise God. Put that down. God's word solves every problem. God's word solves every problem. When you stay focused on God's word, the answers to your questions. See, the, the, the Bible is, a, is your success handbook. It's your success manual, amen? Know that the Word of God needs to stay close. Listen, I remember when I got saved, not only did I have a Bible that I would take to church, but I had a Bible in my, in my glove compartment. I had a Bible and I would carry in my back pocket. And every chance I got when I felt challenged, I would just open up the Word and begin to read. Because when you read God's Word, it begins to empower you on the inside. Your inner man begins to strengthen. You see, the word of God is just a, is like a great feast for your spirit. And your spirit is strengthened and your flesh is subdued. Amen. It, your flesh submits to your spirit. And that's why it's so important for us to have the right mindset. You see, nothing is as important as the word of God to get the wisdom of God for communicating the laws of success and the laws that will put you in a place of victory. It's in God's word. And God's word communicates his wisdom. It's, it communicates his peace. Listen, it communicates his joy, man. And we need joy. Put this down. I need God's joy. 
Why is that so important? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yesterday, we talked about your name being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That should bring you joy every morning, knowing that whatever is around us, whatever is happening in the world, it's serious and it's, and it's hard, but we're not subject to that because our tickets are punched, our bags are packed, amen. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Keep that mindset. Master your mind. Declare God's word over your life over circumstances. See, if you can learn to work with your mind, then you can change your life. Understand that you have to work with it. You have to train it. You have to, you have to be able to pray that you would have the mind of Christ. Amen. See, that's, that takes time and it takes energy and it takes consistency by putting God's word. Then your mindset begins to change. You see, staying the same creates comfort. Write this down. Staying the same creates comfort. Changing creates reward. Oh, praise God. You need to understand that if we stay the same, we can become complacent where we are. But when we change, we open ourselves up to what God has in the future. Amen. God wants to change our hearts, change our minds. And as we move in that direction, praise the Lord. I'm telling you. God has more for you. If you want to stay the same, it's a place of comfort. Nothing grows in the comfort zone. But change creates reward. So be willing to change because the rewards that God has for you will be great. And, and as I close this, this segment out, write this down. I know I have you guys writing down a lot today, but I believe when you write things down, when you listen to them, when you see them, then you'll learn it. It'll get into your heart and into your spirit as well. And remember this, the battle of life is in your mind. The battle of life is in your mind. The battle of your mind is for focus. Oh, wow. My goodness, that's the la write this term before I go into the prayer. Write this down. The battle of life is for your mind. The, uh, I, think, I think it was, it was uh, 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 what's her name? Joyce Myers wrote a book, The Battlefield of the Mind. That's exactly where the battle takes place. It's in your mind. So if you can train your mind, if you can strengthen your mind with God's word, then guess what? The battle of your mind, the battle for your mind is your focus. The enemy will try to distract you. The flesh will try to also distract you and, and, and disrupt your life. Just remember, if you can stay focused, that's the battle. If you stay focused, hallelujah, then you can win the battle that God can also participate with you in as well. Knowing that your mind is the battlefield. Amen. Well, I know, listen, I went just a little bit long with this today. I just felt in my heart that you decide where you put your mind, you decide where you put your thoughts, and if you put them in the right place, that's why many of you are sending me testimony going, man, pastor, I love doing this thing first thing in the morning because it changes my mindset, it sets the tone for the day. That's right, because every day you're, conform you're not conforming to the world, but you're renewing your mind, being transformed by God's word and prayer as well, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Woo, I'll tell you what, I woke up fired. I felt like preaching this morning. God is so good. God is just so, so, so good. Amen. So, so let's pray right now. We're going to pray over these things that we talked about today. Just begin to lift up your hands right now where you are. Just begin to give him glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. Just begin to magnify his name this morning. He is such a good God, such an amazing God. Uh, I love the Lord this morning. Father, we just love you this morning. We just praise you this morning. You are such a good God. Your goodness and grace and mercy. We've chosen to put our minds on the things above, Lord God, to put our minds on you, Lord God. And Father, this morning, give us the strength to create good habits, to create good habits every day, to, to be in prayer every day, to be in your word every single day, to continue to reach out to others, Lord God, to, to speak your words of encouragement, 
to continue to have habits, Lord God, of, of, of every phone call conversation can become a prayer session, Lord God. That we pray for everyone we talk to and talk with, Lord God, and, 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 and come together in one voice, in one heart, and one spirit, Lord God, to bring peace into people's hearts. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the good habits, Lord God, for waking up early in the morning, just like Jesus would do every morning, get up early and separate himself from everyone, Lord God, and be in your presence, oh God. So thank you, Father God, for good habits and, and continue to reveal more things that we can do daily, Lord God, because we know what we do daily changes our future, Lord God. So Father, we thank you right now. And Father God, help us to rem help, help remind us, oh God, that we are royalty. Father God, that we are kings and, and queens in the making. That, Father God, that we are citizens of heaven and we have access to your throne. And in Revelations, it said that, you, that we will sit on thrones with you as well, Jesus. So, Father, we just thank you this morning, oh God, that we can walk with a different mindset, Lord God. That we, with, with the kingly authority that you've given us, Father God. And we know that in your kingdom, oh God, we are kings, hallelujah, and priests in your kingdom, oh God. So we thank you, Father God, for, for understanding that, for that becoming a reality in every one of our lives, Lord God, that we are not subject, Lord God, to this world, but we are kings worshiping the ultimate king, Father God, because you are the king of kings, hallelujah, and the Lord of lords. And we thank you, Lord God, that we will rule and reign with you forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah, Lord. And Father God, help us. Help us to master our mind. Help us, Father God, this morning, Father God, to begin to be conscious. Holy Spirit, begin to make us conscious of our thoughts because our thoughts affect our emotions and our emotions affect our actions. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, we bring every thought under the captivity of Jesus Christ right now. We speak to this mind and we say, devil, you have no place in our mind. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' holy name, Lord God, we've chosen today to take control of our minds and not allow it to drift off. So Lord, when it does, oh God, and when we, our mindset changes to the things that are on this earth, Father God, help us to refocus. Help us to be conscious. Help us, Father God, to take control of our minds, Lord God, and take control of our emotions, Father God. Lord, be Lord over our minds. Be Lord over our emotions. Be Lord over our actions this morning, Father God. And we just thank you and praise you. And Father God, we pray for our nation today. We pray for our city of Richmond, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for the whole world right now that's in that's unrest, it's an unrest, and there's civil unrest, and there's violence, and, and there's looting, and there's all these things that are happening, Lord God. It's lawlessness, Father God, and we know, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are a God of order, you're a God of peace, oh God. So we lift up our nation, Lord God, in our cities, and our states to you right now, Lord God. We lift up the world before you, oh God, and pray, have mercy, upon us, O oh God. We repent for the sins of this world. We rep repent for the sins of our city, Lord God. We repent, Lord God, for all the discrimination and the racism. We repent, O oh God, for all the, the, the abortions and all the, 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 the horrible things that are happening on this planet every day. Lord, have mercy. We humble ourselves before you and we stand in the gap for this world right now, Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray, Lord God, you will heal our land, oh God. That is your promise that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, hallelujah, then you will heal the land. Lord, heal our land. Holy Spirit, come. Let there be a Holy Spirit revival on this planet, Lord God. Begin to 
pour out your spirit, Lord God. We see that the stage is set, oh God. So right now, let the spirit of God rise up within us. Let men and women of God begin to rise up, Lord God, and speak your word and speak for justice, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father. And Lord, we thank you for the victory today, Lord God. We thank you. We pray right now. Right now, begin to pray for all your personal needs. Just begin to pray right now over all the needs that you've written down. Just pray for them right now, for all the people on your list, for the family members that you're praying for. Come on, just take time right now. Just begin to declare it right where you are, whether you're at home or you're in your car. Just lift up those names and just begin to bring them before the Lord. Because we know that God is doing great and mighty things in our families, in our friends, in our colleagues. We know that God is moving in a great and mighty way. And we bring them before you. And we declare victory. We, we speak salvation. We speak divine health. We speak deliverance over the, those people as well, Lord God. And the realization of who you are in the name of Jesus. And we thank you right now. For the victory, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because you said that if we ask, we shall receive. If we seek, we will find. If we knock, it shall be opened unto us. We receive the victory. We receive answered prayer. We declare your word over every circumstance. And we're always going to make sure, Father God, that you get all the glory, that you get all the honor, that you get all the praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Woo! My God. I tell you what, I feel the fire of God where I am right now. Amen, Michael. You guys, that's right, brother. Thank the Father. Praise the Lord right now. Begin to give him glory. Yes, Sharon. That's right. God is able to save. Yes. Thank you, Stephanie Perez. That's right. You've got the victory today. Amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Whew. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, I'm so glad you guys have been patient with me today because I've gone just a little bit long, but I felt that it was time to just get closer to God and get our minds set. Today's the day for you to get your mind set on what God has for you, not what this world has for you, amen. And I want to close as I do every morning with a psalm. I love psalms. I love worship. Psalms 145. Put down Psalms 145. And this is a psalm that you can take. Listen, as, as just like Daniel prayed three times a day, we're going to read this psalm right now. Listen, at lunchtime, do this psalm. In the afternoon, do it again. In the evening, read it as part of your devotion. I believe it will bless you. Praise God. And it says this. I will extol you, my God, O King. Oh, there he is. He is the King. And I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another. Oh, praise the Lord. Let your children hear you praising. Praise them praise him for your works to the another generation. I love that. And, and shall declare your mighty works. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty. And on your wondrous works, men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts. And I will declare your goodness. They shall utter, utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and great is in mercy. Praise God. His mercy is renewed every morning. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies over all His works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. 
Oh, praise God. The eyes of all look expectantly to you. And you give them their food in due season. That's right. God is our provision this morning. See, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Hallelujah. To all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of those who fear him. He will also hear the cry and save them. He will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Put, on, put it in. Write it in right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Release the praises of God right now. Release it into the atmosphere. It is a weapon that tears down the enemy's strongholds. When you open your mouth and say hallelujah, praise the Lord, the enemy is demoralized. The enemy begins to run. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whew. Whew. Glory to God. I, don't know, I hope. And pray that the anointing of God is upon you. And I know it is right now. What you're feeling inside you is the Holy Spirit being stirred up in truth and in his word. Amen. So let me just pray right now as we close this session this morning. Thank you. Thanks again so much for being part of what we're doing. And listen, after this is over, take time to share it. Go on your Facebook and share it. And, and you can also do a watch party as well. Do a watch party. And just hit watch party and let all your friends have, know that you're watching this even after it's done. Some of you actually do watch parties when we begin. And that's a great thing. But also later on in the day, sometime around between 1 and 3 o'clock. Listen, I'm going to give you specific instructions. Between 1 and 3 o'clock, share this and, or do a live watch do a watch party with this session. I guarantee you it's going to touch a lot of hearts. Amen. Let me pray over you right now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, listen, I'm excited. I'm enthusiastic today. I just woke up with an expectation of something good. Something great is going to happen to you today. Listen, I'm going to declare it and prophesy. Prepare today to have something wonderful, some breakthroughs. And yes, there may be issues going on around you, but God has got a breakthrough for you today. Receive that word right now. Receive it. And I believe God is going to make it happen for you this morning. So praise God. This Sunday, we start Grow. If you haven't been to the Grow classes yet, begin right now. Make sure you sign up for Grow. If you have any questions, we'll get that taken care of. And remember, when you're walking in the spirit, you won't give in to the desires of your flesh. Walk in the spirit, amen, all day long today. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful day.